The world has changed. I feel it in the water. I feel it in the earth. I smell it in the air. Munch that once was l is. L <laughs> ah, I messed it up! This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash SOSVHS today to get 10% off your first month. Head to factormeals.com slash SOSVHS50 and use code SOSVHS50 to get 50% off. Get 10% off your order at hellotushi.com with promo code SOS. Andres is, uh, does, is not thrilled about Frodo today. Oh, no, no. I, I mean, I love this movie. Don't get yeah. me wrong. It's a great movie. Yeah. But I think Frodo is not. It's not it. But thank you for choosing me as Frodo. I, I'll be the best <laughs> you Frodo again. You have been cast Frodo. <laughs> it is your destiny. Thank you. Thank you. So, well, welcome to another episode of SOS VHS. And today we have Ga uh, Gandalf Watkins with us, which is uh, an honor. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank it you. is my honor to be here. <laughs> mm, thank you, Gandalf. Uh, what in the hell happened to Legolas? <laughs> He is much less attractive than he is in motion pictures. Yeah, you know, in person, it's a little different. It's the movie magic. You know, all the makeup, exactly. you know. We're all shorter in person, <laughs> you know, like uh, right. Emil Hirsch or Zac Efron. I'm just as tall. I hit my head on the light. <laughs> yeah, that is true. Yeah, the, on the island, there are many uh, Hobbit areas, so. Uh, you know, I met I met uh, uh, Ian McKellen um, at South by Southwest once, like a couple of years after after the movie. Oh, uh, pray do tell. Yeah, and he he was awesome. He was awesome. Was it, it like a gay bar or something? He, he wasn't. It could have been. Yeah. But no, he he made a movie called Gods and Monsters, where mm -hmm. he plays uh, James Well, who is the uh, director of Frankenstein, and he was gay. Yeah, uh, you remember it, this, of course. You, yes, <laughs> but of course. It, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but he he did a full show in front of everybody and said, like, look, he talked about the movie that he was there to 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 discuss, and there's mm -hmm. a, another movie he made. But then he said, well, I cannot leave the stage without without saying what everybody is waiting me to say. Mm -hmm. So he gets in front of the stage, and with his big voice, he goes and he says. You shall not pass. <laughs> and everybody, so like an auditorium, just <laughs> on their feet clapping, That's you know? Because it's just that. It's the, I don't know if they knew that when they shot the movie, but that became the line of, of this movie, for sure. Uh, what a cool character. This was only my second time watching it mm -hmm. uh, when I rewatched it uh, on the island so we could discuss. <laughs> right. Um, and the first time, I didn't finish it because Pete... Uh, from back in America, yeah. told me to watch it. Right, and Peter Jackson is actually <laughs> yeah, it's a, uh, Peter Jackson. <laughs> yes, uh, it's of the Pete family yeah. in uh, right, right. the West. Right. So, yeah. <laughs> what What do you think? I loved it. I loved it. I watched it last night all the way through. Yeah. I but I accidentally watched the extended cut. Yeah. And then I switched over to the non-extended cut on HBO Max. Yeah. And yeah, it was just I. I was even talking about it earlier. I like the scene where uh, Gandalf knows what's in the mines and he's like, uh, let the ring bear choose like our path basically. And yeah. I love that shot of him with the snow going across. I was like, that is so beautiful. Such a beautiful movie. Yeah. I, what did you guys, uh, did you grow up reading the books or not? This was the first thing that you saw. No. Or uh, there's actually a school assignment to read all the books no. and we saw every movie as a class in my middle school and high school. Oh, that's Some cool. of my best class trip memories of all time. Of course. Yeah, I, yeah. Did you guys uh, like reading when you were kids? We didn't, I mean, we- I hated reading. I hated reading when I was a kid. It was like an assignment from class. Oh, I never read the books. I would, I read like the Doors audit, like biography. Like I would read about like- Oh, I see. Like uh, some, some pop culture or like seventies, like directors or something like, uh, or spike Mike slackers and right. Pikes. like I would read 
books like that. But my, not... my, fir- my first year of college, I started reading novels and like, and then I, I fell in love with reading. Mm-hmm. But that was way later, you know, like you were supposed to do all these assignments in high school and, and, and middle school and hated it. And then I read Lord of the Rings and it was one of those things that I, for a full week, I didn't go to class or anything. I stayed in my room and read the whole thing. Oh, wow. And I was like, you know, with it. And then a couple of years later, the movie, no, uh, yeah, a couple of years later, the, 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 the movie came out and I thought it was so faithful to the spirit of the book but also the drawing you know using so the it is for inspiration it's and a all good, that the yeah. language the, 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 the detail you know the love to every for every single detail was there and i was i think that's why people really really i, I remember from the books there was a lot about um uh, Sam's pony bill there was just pages and pages and pages and pages I mean and then you see fellowship of the ring and it's like 15 seconds that's right. why I was when I was watching it I was like oh I'm glad I'm not reading it because I bet that was like 30 pages oh so much <laughs> it's so. I mean it, it's a novel so yeah you know, it doesn't work like but I like bill yeah. I, I related to Sam in that moment I was like oh I, I would be like Sam I'd be like uh like Bill's my friend right <laughs> like that's who I would hang with yes yeah. You'll be at the other bar. Yeah, that sounds like fun. Uh-huh. Yeah. Also, uh, when I saw this movie for the first time in high school, yeah. uh, when it came out in theaters, it was the first time I got high. So it, it kind of ruined my life. Right. Yeah. This is uh, not probably the filmmaker's intention. Yeah. Oh. You like some? I would, actually. Oh, thank you, Gandalf. I thought not anymore for you. Well, th- this is a special uh, non. Uh, psychoactive. Thank you, sir. <laughs> you guys like? Oh, that. is that old Toby? Yeah. Oh, thank you, sir. Blow a little. <laughs> oh, that way, sir. Yeah. <laughs> and make a <laughs> make a little. Make a little trick, something. Oh yeah. Like the 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 little ship that goes in the hole. No. I can't really do that <laughs> with, yeah, with yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. I, I need I I need <laughs> marijuana smoke for that. <laughs> one. Uh, right. Right. Um, mm. So, but wh- why why is this movie your favorite movie or one of your top movies? I think it's one of my favorite movies for many reasons. Um, friendship, brotherhood, merriment, adventure, mm. wizards. <laughs> <laughs> Brotherhood's a good one. Oh, yes. It's all about like brothers hanging out. I recently, so I recently saw um, the, uh, the wrestling movie with... Uh, uh, Zach Efron. Iron Claw. Iron Claw. Oh, I bet you like that one, Gandalf. I loved it. <laughs> a lot of shirtless scenes. <laughs> Is everything gay with you, Carl? <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. Okay. You, don't know, you don't know Legolas? He's an elf. <laughs> yeah. I do want to say, I know you're an elf, but you have the most hobbity hands I've ever <laughs> <Yeah>. seen. <laughs> if you'll show the camera. Yes, I have an issue with biting my nails <laughs> in this world. Yeah, those are like it's a hobbiton for sure. It's a a tough life being a Legolas. So I, you know, lots of anxiety. They don't have Xanax in this world. <laughs> I'm always smoking this pipe. I may have a spell for that. Oh, thank you, <laughs> yeah, sir. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> thank you. Um, may I see your lighter? <laughs> the. You mean my magic? Yes. Oh, please, sir. I think this this movie for. Oh, wow. There you go. Puff, puff. Keep puffing. Thank you for the magic frame. <laughs> and open your mouth. Yes. And... <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. So, I think, like, two, 2000, this movie is 2001, right? And I think, like, at this time, like, CGI was already... Not the Space Odyssey. <laughs> not, not the Space Odyssey. <laughs> <laughs> but it was made in 2001. And at that time, I think, like, CGI was pretty much there but they decided to do it like you know mixing all the effect and i think that's why it aged so well because he did king Kong after i love that movie. and it's a movie that ages so bad everything but I loved feels it. so fake it's too, like CGI, a it's too cgi too, way too much jack and, black's so funny in it though yeah but this movie has uh, i mean you can watch it today still yes. the magic is there you can, like the miniatures the the paintings the all of those effects together like that they build the sets yeah and it has that magic. It's it's uh it's quite awesome. Also, the collection of actors that they got is so great. Um, but yeah, what 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 did it stand out the most? Yeah, the the themes of the movie when you were seven. That was the or the, what? the soundtrack is unbelievable. Yeah. Do, 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 do. Do, do, I, 
would say it's my the second the second best soundtrack in, in film history. What's the first? I think the Star, Star Wars, Wars has to be yeah. the first, but I think this one it goes just right after. I think when when James Horner did this, it's like okay, he he was a moment where I said, oh, Jim Williams, you got a competitor. Yeah. The whole trilogy is just beautiful. Yes. That's like cool. yeah, and also I love these big movies for for music because you can have those lay motif, those like musical elements linked to a character or to yes, like a group course. or to the ring or mm -hmm. and and you know it's a huge opera to 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 compose music for so it's always cool. Didn't didn't Howard Shore also do uh, Silence of the Lambs? I believe. I think he composed Silence of the Lambs. Oh really? Was, before Lord of the Rings, yes. Oh, sure. Yes. Yeah, I said James Horner. No, you yeah. said James, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, whole, and he did Apollo sure. 13 and stuff. Yeah, and he 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 worked with um, Shyamalan, I think, too. But oh, really? I, But I think this movie was the, I mean, I think this soundtrack is just incredible. And it's one of those that you hear a couple notes and you yeah. you see those mountains in your in your head and those. I'm glad I finally saw it all the way through and like yeah. really paid attention. It was really nice. So you never saw it in the theater, right? No, I saw it in the theater, but I was high. Oh, I see. Yeah, so I didn't know what was going on. Yeah, you were <laughs> my so first time. Your brain was a little slowed, if you. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah, Gandalf. A little ashamed right now to tell you, to mm. be honest. It's all right, my darling. Thank you, sir. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. I, uh, but you know, I continued to smoke after that. Oh, I'm well aware. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you, sir. Um, but I, I saw the movie Sober last night, and so it was a wonderful experience. And had you seen, obviously, you guys were in high school. I, I was just starting college, but uh, any of the Peter Jackson previous movies? Because I was a pretty big fan of Peter Jackson growing up. but Later. Later. Not before. Right. I was not too familiar with Peter Jackson until Lord of the Rings. And then after- You went I, back? I went back, <laughs> and I was like, how did he get given a budget for some of this? <laughs> Unbelievable. It, insanity. Because insanity. He, he is like a, like a runchy, like super indie filmmaker, has no money to do his movies. Like his alien movies, like the aliens are just people wearing jeans. That's how, That's you so know, funny. or whatever. He did a movie called Bad Taste with Puppet. But he had something, you know, there is mm -hmm. something in his movies, but you would not see the leap to this. Mm. I think then he did movies a little, I mean, from these movies, I think he did Heavenly Creatures with um, Kate Winslet. Oh, yeah. And he did one about ghosts, I forgot the name, with... with uh, I don't know the ghost movie. And and those of. were a little like higher, more like mainstream, but mm -hmm. still, like, it's such a huge leap to do this movie. Because yeah. this movie made New Zealand, you know, this is New Zealand's industry. It's Lord yeah. of the Rings now, like the main industry for the whole country. That's wild. It's like he... he like a tourism industry to the, go. Yeah, tourism, it. but everything, I mean, yeah. during all those years. And then think about he did the Hobbit afterwards. So this is like yeah. a 20 or 25 Imagine years winning the Super Bowl <laughs> 20 years in a row. Right. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. It's insane. That's it's, what the tourism does for New Zealand. Abs absolutely. And a lot of people like my father had no idea even anything about New Zealand <laughs> right. until Lord of the Rings. And he wants to go to New Zealand someday. I mean, absolutely. And it wow. looks it looks gorgeous in the, in the movie. Like you yeah. have all those landscapes. But also like he did what George Lucas did in the 70s uh, in New Zealand. Like he created a... a a special effects company. Oh, he did that to there. compete with with Industrial Light and Magic, like toe to toe. You know, then they did a lot of like the three D and Avatar and all of that stuff came from from these guys. Oh wow! Uh, uh, Frodo's the uh, Frighteners huh? that he did, right? The Frighteners that movie. Is Fright Fright yes, about? yes, yes, exactly. Right exactly. before uh, Lord of the Rings. Yes, and those movies are like you would say like a B Hollywood movie. You yeah. wouldn't think twice uh, about it, but it's like. Definitely more mainstream than the ones that Gandalf and I were discussing, where they're like, so, you know, indie and yeah. like. I never saw those other they, ones. They're, they're, I think they're great and is worth watching. Also, he was this like super fat director. He looks like an orc. <laughs> he looks like an org. I mean, like, the Lord of the Rings changed. He, his whole persona changed completely. Yeah. And from 2001 to 2005, he's a different person to outside, you know, like he was like this nerdy guy. What's he like in 05? He was like, he lost all the weight, you know, okay. and it was like, like, oh, of course. He did a Tom Segura. <laughs> He, he did he, Ozempic before it came out. Right. He he looks like a completely different different person. He's like a Hollywood guy. Now. Yeah, yeah. That he, is so funny. And He's it's like a, Jonah Hill or something. Yeah. Because hmm. also like he he wrote the script for this with his wife. He produced the movie. He I mean it's it's a whole wrote it with his Jackson. wife. Jeez. <coughs> yeah. 
A wife is when a man is attracted to a woman, Carlos. Oh. <laughs> That's funny. You he tell did. me about that, Gandalf. <laughs> I, feel- uh, I guess some people have wives that are male and male and female and female, but uh, yeah, know, I just want no, to it's explain like a- that to you. Thank and you, off, what's going on with Frodo and Sam? Are they together? Yeah, Frodo and Sam, I mean- I would say that it's a possibility <laughs> because when you spend that much time with someone uh, and there's that much treachery around you, there's not much- And it's so cold. It's very cold. You have to bundle up at night. Uh-huh. And sometimes you need the warmth of a man. <laughs> I wouldn't mind it. Like I was telling uh, Frodo earlier, like, we have... could do that. Like like me, like I would have gone. Like, we, you know. Um, on the journey to murder? Oh, yeah. I think, and like, if I need to bundle up with my brothers, that's okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like you're that type of person, that friendly. Yeah. Very, like overly friendly, <laughs> yeah. but it's funny, you know. I think it'd be fun. But I reading the book, I feel like the the friendship is there and there's like a definitely a connection. Watching the movie, there's like certain lines and looks and things that I feel like it, it, it plays at both ways. You know, it's the, definitely alluding at times that there could be more than a fellowship. Right. You know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because no, no other character has that. Because the other two hobbits are friends, but they don't have this this connection. You know, the no. the, the way that they look at each other, the way that, I mean, I think in the second movie, like Sam tell, tells him, like, "Oh, I'm your Sam." You know, you don't remember your Sam. You're like, oh wow, who talk? I mean, it's a very even for Carlos. Okay. <laughs> not, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's very intimate. So yeah, I'm not sure if it was. I the, like intimate moments though. Yeah, with your brothers, they it, bring you together. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. And BetterHelp is something that have helped us and the whole company and the people we work with and other shows. And uh, the people we come across. Yeah. Because we're BetterHelp. <laughs> yeah. And now they're not going to see us at, you know, not so help. When BetterHelp came around to all these podcasts that we work with, like, it was like I, I started to try it. And I was like, oh, I see. I can do therapy in a very, uh, you know, Easy, easy way to do therapy. I can do it from my house. I don't need to go to an office. I don't need to, you know, yeah, it's not like have cold. the hustle. Yeah. Yeah. If you're on like dating apps, I know you're not, but I am. <laughs> mm-hmm. All profiles say, will not date a guy that's not in therapy. Well, girl, I got better help now. Yeah, I think they should, they should use that just regularly for their... their. Uh, yeah, like now you don't have to lie on your profiles. Um, it should just be a billboard for yeah. better help. Now you don't have to lie on, on Hinge. Yeah, and Carlos, when when I met you, you you've been doing therapy, right? And then you you changed to better help. Yeah, it was and, a pain. Uh, I would always have to leave the office early. I was forty five minutes from therapy, uh, which isn't even that far in LA, but it's just a pain. Right. Um, the elevator was slow. <laughs> Parking was annoying. I switched over, and now it's convenient. I get to spend more time with uh, you, Andres, which is nice. Right. Um, which is therapy in itself. <laughs> so, so if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapies anytime for no additional charge. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash SOSVHS today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, dot com, slash SOS, V-H-S. Carlos, are, are you happy that Factory is sponsoring SOS? I'm actually super excited <laughs> about it. When I saw them, I was like, ooh, I can't wait to take all the meals from right. my dress. <laughs> the, yeah, the last couple months have been awesome because I, I, I never hated cooking, but I don't have time for it. I Now with baby and everything, I get home, I'm so tired now. I'm thinking, you know, before Factor, I was like, okay, let me order out, you know, like some, some takeout. Now, put it in the microwave and it's delicious. And it's just, you know, in, in a couple minutes, I have a meal. I, I love it. Like last last night I have the the cheddar lime uh, chicken that was amazing. Like with a little bit of jalapeno and you know like we're not Mexican in Spain. We don't we don't usually have like a spicy food. Yeah, delicious, delicious, and 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 so easy to <laughs> so easy to make. I mean, I got the loaded bacon cheddar chicken. Right. 
Also, it was, it was gas. Amazing. It was gas, dude. You you would have liked that. I'm Mexican, so I would. We should have traded. I should have yeah. taken yours. Um, but it was gas as heck. Uh, eating better is easy with Factors' delicious, ready to eat meals. Every fresh, never frozen meal is chef crafted, dietitian approved, and ready to go in just two minutes. I love that it's dietitian approved. Right, and <laughs> and you'll have over thirty five different options to choose from every single week, which is insane. Uh, including Calorie Smart for Carlos, Protein Plus, and Keto. Also, there are more than 60 add-ons to help you stay fueled Ooh. up and feeling good all day long. I love add-ons. Yeah. I love like in Mario Odyssey, I'm replaying it. Yeah. I go around and I buy little added <laughs> add-on things like for my uh, my right, Odyssey like getting ship. the extra bread or the dessert. So sign up and save. We have done the math. Factor is less expensive than takeout. I, I can assure you of that. Uh, and every meal is dietitian approved to be nutritious and delicious. So how do how do they get it, uh, Carlos? It's pretty easy. You just head to factormeals.com slash SOSVHS50 and use code SOSVHS50 to get 50% off. That's code SOSVHS50 at factormeals.com slash SOSVHS50 to get 50% off. Because it, this is a very male-driven movie. I mean, there are yeah. some women, and women have power in this movie, but it is a very yeah. You not forget movie. the hot elves in this film. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, like Ben Shapiro would like this movie a lot. Yeah, I think, yeah. That, absolutely. I yeah. think it's, it's a movie that also our fans will, will probably love. It's, yeah. <laughs> question for you guys. Arwen or Galadriel? Which one would you Arwen, watch? for sure. Every time, Arwen. Wait, who are those people? Liv Tyler or, or oh. Kate Blanchett? I've oh. had wet dreams about Liv Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> Not my proudest fap, but it's a reality. <laughs> my apologies to the Liv Tyler family. I know she's a mother. Tyler, we're she sorry. She is. Uh, but she could get it in and out of my dreams. I mean, she was, a, she was at that time, right? <laughs> Have you seen that movie with her called Dreamers? Like just a couple years before this is like when she came to the world of, of film, like you see there's some Italian movies and some like, uh, and she's so, I think she's so beautiful. Yeah. And I think like, she looked like enough. I mean, I think Kate Blanchett looks beautiful in this movie, but she's, I mean, I'm so used to seeing her uh, doing she, all kinds of things. She does have something about her that, like that scene when she does pass the test of whether or not she will take the ring from Frodo. Yeah. She has an underlying evil just characteristic the way she holds herself yeah and it's scarce basically. absolutely i mean tempted <laughs> but you can use magic to help with that fear right sometimes but i'm still human at the root of it yeah and you don't do like cheap parlor tricks either so it's like you save your magic for big moments but of course yeah, yeah. not like covering like an erection in <laughs> basketball shorts <laughs> well <laughs> If I had the ring, I this would robe is sometimes very free flowing. I that's <laughs> the reason why you don't have the ring is because you know, like the locker rooms, the girl locker rooms would be like full oh, of I, scandals, you know. Like, <laughs> so I, I feel like it's good that Legolas. Oh, you know what I would do is I would see an escort and I'd be like, "Here's your money," and then I put the ring on, and, and then you would see the door close. <laughs> Yes. I feel like, I don't know why, but when I saw this time, uh, this film was around uh, middle school, high school time, uh, the girls, I remember distinctly thinking it was hot that Legolas could walk on snow. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Everyone else is sinking, it's, but it, he's so he's, light and dainty with his weight. And I think that, absolutely. I think he has a grace to him, right? And it's the yeah. first time, that you, I mean, I, I had never seen Orlando Bloom before this, yeah. but definitely he comes off as like a super handsome and light. Is there something? This, this is the movie that kind of introduced him. Right. right? Just he, he went from this to then Pirates of the Caribbean, so he did yeah. yes. two back to back. like A couple decent sized friends. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. But definitely in this in this movie, like he, and, and the way that they, because you spend reading the book descriptions and pages and pages about how an elf is different than a, than a humor yeah. or than a hobbit. And here with like little things like that, you know, seeing him like, oh, he's just so light that he can walk over snow and you see, oh, that's a different than the other guys who are like actually completely sunk in, in the snow. I yes, I don't think Legolas would jackrabbit in the bedroom. No. <laughs> I think it'd be more smooth. He'll, he'll, yeah. yeah it's a romantic time. He will float. But Gimli. <laughs> <laughs> Which 
Yes, I also thought you could have been Gimli for this. Because <laughs> you have the beer already. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah. When, when like Gimli finishes, he just goes, yes! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Indeed. Um, but yeah, I... I <laughs> I think uh so the story I haven't I haven't had time and to And my axe. Yes. <laughs> and my axe. Give me that axe. <laughs> <laughs> he said By the way, there's going to be lots of nerd references this episode. Right. Welcome yeah, to the party. We'll have to, we'll have to censor those movements for YouTube. Um <laughs> What? <laughs> anyway, but uh, I thought about not continuing to talk as Gandalf uh, the entire time, but uh, then I realized Andres puts on a voice every single episode. <laughs> it's true. You, I, I committed to this. You know, I've been doing yeah. it for for ten years straight, mm -hmm. which is like the biggest joke everybody else. Oh yeah, it's like a bit. What? Like, no one knows your real voice. It's like yeah. Jim Carrey in, in uh, Dumb and Dumber Two. You know, like. <laughs> He, that, I'm I'm doing that a bit for yeah. Andres is from Orlando. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, I I I'd seen a Lord of the Rings movie that was made before this. That was just an animated movie mm -hmm. that was uh interesting. But when when they announced that they were making this movie, there were like a million haters, right? Like it's impossible. This movie cannot be made. I think I remember that. All of that. Also, it's like a it's a nine hour movie without the extended version. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yes. and, and, and I thought like when I saw it, I felt like, you know, whatever, however people felt in 1978 when they, they saw Star Wars, I think I, that's what my generation felt like, like totally. kind of like it was the time also Harry Potter was coming, but I feel like maybe Harry Potter was, well, you guys were in high school, so it might have been as appealing, but this was like so real and adult and, and magical at the same time. And, um, and narrative wise, it's like three hours, but it's never boring. There's so much stuff going on. I noticed that too. That's like it. That's how like Killers of the Flower Moon was for me too. It just like goes by quickly because it's so beautiful. You just want to take in every moment. Yeah, but uh, I mean, obviously, different genre completely. Yeah, but just like the um, a good movie that's really long, I'm like hell yeah. Yeah, but for to make Lord of the Rings, I think they have eighty units. Uh, eight, basically eight teams of people sh with eight different cameras oh, wow. shooting at the same time because those battle scenes, which, but, so if you watch something like Napoleon that has amazing battles, like these battles are as good, you know, yeah. made, like 20 years ago. It's like, they're so, I, I thought the editing in this movie is fantastic. I, I'm surprised that this movie didn't win any Oscars. I mean, I know they gave them all the Oscars at the end, kind of like, That's why. Kind of yeah. like the trilogy wins the Oscars, not yet. Yeah, Fellowship movie. won four. Two four. Towers won two, and Return of the King won 11. Yeah, so this movie for, did win an Oscar. Tied with, uh, I think, Ben, oh. Her, and Titanic, Titanic. for yeah. most Oscars of all time. Wow. Yeah, yeah. so it, it won it won big time, the, the, the third one. But I feel like, I don't know which movie you like most. I feel this movie- I haven't seen the other ones. You haven't seen the other no. ones? No. Oh. Yeah, I'm going to watch them. I'm excited. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, I think it's the same movie. It's like, yeah. it's such a huge story. And like the book is three books. Yeah. So they- I'm excited. Yeah. I think it's his, he was born to make- You have movie. not seen the other two films. I, I have not, Gandalf. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So you watch the first one and say it's not worth it watching the other ones. Well, it was just that like my dad wasn't into them, so I didn't watch right. them. Like that's who mm -hmm. like was my influence. So, I right. wish I could see through your eyes for the first time. First time yeah. <laughs> when you experience because it's going to be a special, special. It was special last night, really enjoying it. Yeah. I watched it last night as well, so we were together last night. Oh, I like that. <laughs> yes. Yeah, like looking at the moon at the same time. Did you The did fellowship you... had not been broken. <laughs> <laughs> On yes, HBO I, Max. Yes. Yeah. Actually, it was Max, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I didn't want to bust out the DVDs and uh, put all those in. The right, movie. right. Yeah. Uh, no, but but Max I, was good enough. Don't you guys Plus, miss the, I mean, I don't subtitles. know if you guys were, were as nerdy as me, but I love when the DVDs have those extras and then- The for bonus something, features. Those bonus, yeah, yeah, because for something like this, you could see the sets being built. And yeah. I think like for movies that are this kind of like magical, it's- cool to see how much they I do. I feel like bonus features has really been lost over the years. Oh, they, yeah. Just as soon as streaming started happening. They, dis they, they disappear. They separated it. Maybe they figured it wasn't making as much money as they yeah. hoped. But for true fans of something, it's, some, it's so beautiful to see really the inner workings behind the film. 
Oh yeah, yeah. even like the director's commentary on movies, I would watch those obsessively. Yeah, but, like Ocean's Eleven. I was like, mm. this is like free film school. It's a, right. It's it's a fun fun to to tap into like you know the 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 other side of the camera and see yeah. what, how they did it. And I think now everybody has a podcast. It's like you see a TV show or something that's kind of like the behind the scenes is like but it's just the interviews it doesn't yeah. really show you the inner workings of of things um, sometimes between movies on hbo like on cable they'll have like behind the scenes oh stuff. i see yeah like right, right. Yeah. i have no i don't have cable <laughs> I, I have it for uh what is cable <laughs> and i would ask <laughs> i used to watch a little bit uh when walking dead was in his prime mm. uh, i would watch the post show for that and that and they would sometimes show behind so, the scenes footage and stuff like that right that was oh, very, very cool yes because uh, yeah i feel like um in 2001 there was this the ipod video i don't know if you guys remember uh, so Oh, it was a was big that? iPod before the phones, right? Like, uh, and that you could not only have music, but have video in it. I forgot about the iPod video. Like, and I feel like that one wasn't as big. It wasn't big, but for this movie, so what they would do is like, so if Peter Jackson is shooting with the main actors, uh, let's say a, a big battle or something, and he's shooting with with Viggo Mortensen or, or with Orlando yep. Bloom, there's all this other stuff that is being shot at the same time, so... A lot of the producers became like second unit directors or the writers oh, because, wow. you know, he's using the people he has who knows the movie best. Yeah. And then they would come with those iPod video to show him, look, is this take good? Is this take good? Do you like this? So he was oh, doing wow. his own thing and, and seven other things at the same time. Which That's insane. It's insanity. So have you heard the story about Viggo Mortensen that uh, he was actually not familiar with the books of the franchise? Yeah. At all. And his son. His son convinced him to do told it. Told him. Father, you have to do this this Strider character. Right. I quite amazing. I I also think like I as amazing as this actor is, I think this character it's uh you know, I think Gandalf too. I but Ian McKellen has such a vast mm, career. He's Magneto too. So mm -hmm. he has enough iconic characters. I don't think any other actor has something as iconic as this that you cannot identify then. It's like Elijah would definitely did a lot of movies, but he Kramer. will always be free. Have you not seen Hidalgo starring <laughs> Viggo Mortensen? Right, and, and Green Book, and he did a lot of great things, but he'll always be, uh, to me, he's always Aragorn. Always Aragorn. Mm. And he's, a, he's an interesting character because his family is from Argentina. He speaks perfect Spanish. Oh, wow. He has shot movies in Spanish, okay. and he lives in Spain. Oh, very nice. Yeah, he, so he's he, an ally. He's an ally. Yeah. We like him. Yeah. Uh, I actually, every time I, I'm on a project, try to get him. And of course, he's, he's a poet. He's a painter. He directed movies. And he's from Argentina. Yeah. I always, I'm, I'm always wondering if people from Argentina are secretly Nazis. So that's what I was, that's what went That's where your, your brain goes. Yeah. That's where, uh, that's what I thought. Well, yeah. like I always say. Shout out to all the Argentinians <laughs> watching. <this>. Yes. <laughs> I have to always, we have a disclaimer in this show, you know, the opinions of Carlos do not represent the opinions of everybody. Of Frodo. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, tons of them escaped to Argentina. There's plenty of like literature and movies about it, but. Yeah. But I, I yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure Vigo not... Morton's is not a Nazi. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. He seems cool. Yeah, he's yeah. cool. He's have cool. you guys seen Eastern Promises? Oh, yeah. You see a little bit more of Vigo in that movie. Yeah, Eastern oh, Promises like and the other one. What is the other one that he did with? Uh... You see his balls is what I'm trying to say. Oh, yeah, Viggo that... Morton. There's a, there's a naked fight scene in that We movie. got the subtlety first, you know. <laughs> I, I understood what you were implying. <laughs> <laughs> a, a, a history of violence he did before. And oh, then right. Eastern Promises with, uh, was the director? Cronenberg. Cronenberg, mm. yeah. And... and, and I think he's amazing in both. Yeah, he's a great actor. But but yeah, I think like it was it was I I read that back in the day that his son tell him, "Hey, Aragorn is a good guy. You should you should do this movie." I feel like that's how a lot of things like happen in It's Hollywood. like, like you, you know, just, like, not a your... man. Yeah. I think Elijah would got hit the role because he self taped himself and sent it to Peter Car uh, Peter Jackson and say, "Hey, uh this is before like auditions were on on yeah. self tape all the time." Um and then he's a big Smashing Pumpkins fan. He's a, Elijah, Elijah he's, Wood, he's a DJ. Yeah, he's yeah. Like I mean, he created fan. a company in LA that produces horror movies. Yeah, like, he's a big, big filmmaker all around. But I like Sean Astin's career as of late. 
Oh, him, uh, him in Stranger Things. Yeah. He, he's yes. Fantastic. I he's mean, great. he has those like, you know, from Goonies so to great. Stranger Things. and Stranger Things story about Sean Astin mm -hmm. is he submitted a tape and casting was shocked that he would do that. He was submitting a tape for, for it. And they were like, absolutely. That's awesome. That's yeah. Crazy. Super he just sent cool. in a, a, he heard about the breakdown for the role. Oh, and wow. he just sent in a tape and they're like, it said Sean Astin. They're like, well, it can't be that. And then they <laughs> open it up. They're like, this is Sean Astin submitting that, for this Oh, that's character. awesome. That's yeah. crazy. That's awesome. He probably just like liked yeah, it a lot for, for, the breakdown. For people here. out yeah. there, can you guys explain a little bit, uh, especially also, you, since you, you have done uh, also many uh, TV and, and, and film and all of that. Like, how does the audition process work so people understand what, what it is to audition and who auditions and who does an audition? Oh, yes. A little quick recap, I guess, to say. Uh, mm -hmm. Basically, uh, casting companies will put out what they call a breakdown for a role. And uh, agencies or sometimes actors can submit if they think that they fit the role properly. And then the casting company will send you an email saying, we are willing to see you. Because a lot of times they, you submit for things, they're not even willing to see you. They look at your face and go, you're not worthy. It's all about will. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And then eventually you submit for it. And if you do well enough, then the pool gets smaller. And then there's a, something called a callback. And then eventually there might be, might be put on a veil or pinned for a role. And then eventually uh, the booking is uh, confirmation is sent out to the agent or the actor, whoever's uh, booking the part. And it's a full. So why Very were they thing, shocked that, that that that's how Sean uh, Austin did? Uh, because he doesn't have to go through those avenues because of fame. So that's a big deal. A lot of times when you reach a certain level, they give offers where they literally, they don't have the audition. They know you're good enough because you were Samwise in, in the Lord of the Rings. Mm -hmm. So Samwise normally friend. Stranger Things would just, they thought that they were, he was out above outpriced. It would be like LeBron James going to one of the worst NBA teams at the time. Because Stranger Things at the time, the Duffy brothers were a not a household name. They mm -hmm. were nobodies. They actually had Stranger Things rejected for years and years until it was finally made. Mm -hmm. And another small fact that I'm sure both of you know is Bobby Lee auditioned to be one of the teachers in mm -hmm. Stranger Things. Yep. But and he did not get it. He did not get it. No. <laughs> they didn't an think Asian, he was smart enough to teach an everything. Asian science teacher in the 80s? I don't buy it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> yeah. He, he was excited about that, I remember. I mean, it's oh. one of those things, like, especially the beginning when there's a new thing coming, you don't know. Like, yeah. So the expectations are pretty low. When it becomes a hit, yeah, then everybody wants to be a part of, of it. Of course, yeah. Oh. Uh, but yeah, I think Sean Austin has a really interesting career. And, and, and they, I mean, I think every character, once you see them, you know, it doesn't matter, is it Boromir or like, mm. you, it's like, yes, it was Did cast perfect. Did Gimli go on to do other things? Can we look that up? Because <laughs> I don't, I'm not, What's out of all of the <laughs> actors in that, uh, to me, I I maybe vaguely see him in TV shows. Occasionally. He looks that also. He's so he's so disguised. This guy, so yes. it's difficult mm. to see him. I think like uh, everybody else, you can totally see them. Like you know, His name is actually. John Rhys Davies. Yes, I think he did a bunch of stuff. Uh, right after, yeah, he was in Raiders as Sala. Yes. Oh wow. Yes, that's say what. Huh. Let's see. So oh, he's uh, got a lot. Yeah, he has a lot. Of, uh, that's what I think. Like almost everybody. From he might be a, a true character actor. That yeah, really, right. really blends in. And blends whatever. in is one of those actors that yeah, very chame chameleon. That he he, he can. He's do. in the new Aquaman. As oh, yeah. uh, probably more than Amber Heard. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, just just a voice. <laughs> yeah. I want to rent I, it. That's another great, uh, great conversation to have that has nothing to do with Lord of the Rings. But yeah. yeah, it's like she's in like the only things that they cannot cut out. Exactly. Mm -hmm. She's in there, you know, mm -hmm. like I need 10 to see seconds. It. He's but, in Indiana Jones, Dial of Destiny as Sala. Oh. Hmm. Is that the latest one that came out? No. That's the. That's 2023. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. The, that's the yeah, latest yeah, one. Yeah, okay. yeah. So he's that, in there. Yeah, but yeah. That's the one I haven't seen yet. Yeah. I like the Shia LaBeouf one though, mm. surprisingly. Carlos, let me tell you, when I moved to the US, the two things that bothered me the most was one, they didn't have shutters in the windows. 
and uh, I like to sleep in the dark. And two, they didn't have bidets, in, bidets on, on bathrooms. You know, in Spain, like every bathroom has one. Yeah. So when I finally found Tushi, I thought, okay, this is, this is how you do it. Because you don't want to wipe to death. It's so much hy hygienic. It's more pleasant to have water. I know. You know I... Rub against your butt. <laughs> yes, it does feel good. I didn't know about bidets because I'm from America. <laughs> Uh, not such a bad thing, <laughs> but, uh, I didn't know about bidets until I went to Japan. Right. Yeah. A yeah. lot of good hygiene there. And also when, uh, I, I lived with my ex-wife, we had a nice house with a bidet. Yeah. But you know what? Tushy is making me bring, is making me take back the bidet from my ex-wife <laughs> and from Japan. Also, the good thing about thank Tushy, you Oppenheimer, which is like yeah, I'm not I'm not I'm not a super handy person, and this is so easy to install. Oh yeah, you know? I know because it comes. You you think like oh, this is gonna be this huge box? No, it comes in a very tiny box. You can yeah. you only need to take uh, the lid off of your of your uh, toilet, and then you you install it so easy. It's just one hose. It's yeah. I don't know. I think like if I can do it, anyone can do it. That's how I feel too. So I'm not <laughs> handy at all. Right, right. I yeah. know. Yeah. If we can do it, anyone can do it. Yeah, exactly. The Tushy Bidet cleans your butt with a targeted stream of fresh water, eliminating the need for painful wiping. Yeah. Painful wiping. Some people may be into that, but not us, surprisingly. We and, got this shirt. Yeah, that is so cool. Look, look what we got. Yeah. Ask me about my butthole. <laughs> I'm going to wear this everywhere in Los Angeles. <laughs> yeah. I have so many answers ready for all sex, creeds, and ages over 18. Stop wiping until you bleed, Carlos. Join the, th the three million bats who have already made the switch to Tushy. For a limited time, our listeners get 10% off your entire order when you use code SOS at checkout. That's 10% off your order at Hello Tushy, H E L L O T U S H Y dot com with promo code SOS. That's 10% off your order at Hello Tushy dot com, H E L L O T U S H Y dot com with promo code SOS. SOS. Cool. I really enjoy the relationship of Gandalf and Frodo in The Lord of the Rings. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he... It's like this fatherly, brotherly, but also just deep friendship at the end of the day. Yeah. It's very... Because it, it starts like a real, like an uncle is coming to visit. Mm -hmm. It feels like that. It feels like family, like distant family. He has an halo of mystery. You can tell so much how revered Gandalf is just the way the town is screaming his name. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's Kids. so much happiness and yeah. joy behind the, the, the tone behind it. And, right. And as he's driving away in the, in the carriage. Love that moment. That scene, yeah. he doesn't even look back. He knows <laughs> He knows exactly what it's Yeah, he does this smirk towards camera, but yeah. he doesn't look back. A subtle thing where he's like, mm. but yeah. Fireworks, Gandalf. <laughs> yeah. So good. Because the whole mythology of, of wizards that it's barely, you don't really explore in Lord of the Rings. It's more in, in the books. And mm -hmm. he has a book also called the Silmar Silmarillion, which is all, it's a, more like a Bible for his middle earth, okay. you know, with all the intricacy of where did these characters come from and all of that. Mm -hmm. But I, I feel like it's like, he's a mystical character. There are not that many wizards. I think there's only three wizards, you know, in the- Three? <coughs> in Middle Earth. And- uh, Oh, yes. Right? Um, yes, because there's Saruman, of mm -hmm. course. Uh -huh, and the then white. there's also, and then there's also uh, in The Hobbit, what was the name of- Radagast. The, yes. Uh -huh. Which is a great character. I mean, the poop in the hair was a little much. <laughs> right. But, I mean, he did live amongst the animals. So right. He's like that. the... He has poop in his hair? <laughs> it's almost like a hair gel. It's so thick. Oh, wow. It's, it's, it's part of like, like he has a nest in his uh, in his hat. Instead oh, of uh, like huskies to mush and snow, he has uh, fast rabbits. Oh. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. So it's a, it's, it's a world with like wizards wizzer, are like, you know, kind of like, Magicians, you don't yeah. really know Is what black they do. Magic? Like, yeah, and then and so, but but they bring happiness for sure, yeah. right? Well, and then, when you first saw the Lord of the Rings, the Fellowship, uh, how quickly did you think that Saruman was a bad wizard? To be fair, the moment I saw him, because uh, Christopher Lee, mm -hmm. 
my my image of Christopher Lee and he's a great actor is like Dracula and like uh you know Fu Manchu he's never like a good guy he has this like features also he was just in, in Star Wars you know like the Count Dooku yeah exactly so he was like he can be good it doesn't matter if he wears white he has this like face this angular face that seems evil to me he has a great voice as well. oh a great voice i mean he's a great actor i mean and he, he's yeah. in the movie for like five minutes hello gandalf <laughs> yeah. yes i was skeptical of him yeah what about you guys? it was like it wasn't immediately for me but i was also like gandalf's so good this must be like the opposite right now in this scene i was trying to see it that way right yeah because like he's supposed to be the head of the order right like, mm -hmm. the master wizard yeah and he's been corrupted. I like how Gandalf just goes everywhere too. He's always like about town. Yeah. He's running around Middle he, Earth. He has, he's it's the cool. only one. I like, would say I'm spry for my age. Yeah, I yeah. agree. Because like, like the it. Hobbits are like Americans, you know? Poppers. Most of, most of them don't have passports. They haven't lived the Shire. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know? They're not very cultured. Sam <laughs> says, after this step, this is the farthest I've <laughs> ever been. Oh, insane. And I grew up with people in Kansas that way. Right. They said that they had not been past 95th Street. Right. Oh, wow. It was mind-blowing. To me, when and they didn't have a desire on, to. What's on 96th Street? Uh, <laughs> Missouri? The, uh, basic, no, it's, uh, it was a shopping mall. Yeah. Oh, 95th was like a, a, like a shopping area. So the, cool. the, they didn't have a reason to, to, to go, go past. past that. Oh, yeah, but, and they were in high school and they were proud of it. And I'm like, you're dumb as shit. <laughs> but yeah, you, you're not cultured I mean, whatsoever. Th this country. No, I had to leave past 95th. What is your problem? <laughs> Get it, out while you can. This country is so contradictory, you know, because you have, you have it all. I mean, it is a full continent. But because when I moved to the U.S., I moved to New York. So, mm -hmm. of course, my expectation after that is like, oh, this is how the U.S. is. Oh, yeah. And then it's like nothing like that, you no. know. And it's a lot of people are in more rural communities and they don't have the, this. I, actually, they see the cities or the coast as like kind of like uh, the devil's work happens mm -hmm. in, in, in that. And so they're not very interested in exploring the world and all that, which I found fascinating. And I think like Gandalf is the opposite, you know. Gandalf is the person who has been everywhere, Which you is know? cool. Who knows everything and knows about... I mean, he's supposed to have been in the in this Middle Earth for hundreds of years. Meet me with the Prancing Pony. Yeah. I, lo I love that name, the Prancing Pony. Bob. It's such... Yeah. <laughs> and... There's a scene, there's a scene where actually when I watch it again, you always get something new from the movie that Ian McGillan does in his acting that's very subtle when Frodo's in Rivendell and then Frodo asks... Why didn't you meet us? And he has this concern. He's like, happy to see Frodo, but also something's haunting him. Uh, and then Frodo's like, what's going on? And he's like, oh, I, I was delayed. And he's trying to keep upbeat, but there's that complex emotion that Ian McGillan does that's just so great. A little subtlety. He doesn't so great. want to scare Frodo as to how <laughs> bad things are. are right. Mm. Yeah. He, I mean, I think he's, Obviously, Cable and Shed is an amazing actress, but she has a very small role. But he yeah. is an actor of a different caliber, Ian McKellen. And he brings this gravitas yeah. to this movie that could be very silly. The movie could be oh, silly yeah. in terms of light. And he brings it. it this, he does the same thing on, on X-Men too. Like he mm -hmm. brings the the stupidity of like what the fight is to a real place. And so it's like, cool. oh, it, it you can feel for for the people that he represents in X Men or but watching it like here too. Oh. Yeah, just seeing Gandalf like he's immediately a presence on the screen. And I know this is like everyone has probably said this, but having seen it really with fresh eyes last night, yeah. I was just blown away, and it instantly brought me into the movie. Did you ever see his uh, Ian McKellen's uh, Sir Ian McKellen's uh, guest role on Extra with Ricky Gervais? Yes. So good. If you have not seen this, uh, maybe they can put a link to it in the description. <laughs> it's worth the three minutes. It's he he so can do good. anything. I mean, I think the only bad part I saw him in, but it's just, I don't think it's him, it's just the movie so bad, is Cats. Where <laughs> he, he plays a cat and, and sings and does the whole thing. Isn't James but he Gordon can, in that? Yeah, 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 yeah. And Taylor Swift and, and people who can sing. Really well. But he can sing. He can do yeah. anything. It's it's. Uh, I didn't see Cats. Yeah. That, no, I don't believe you're worth missing it. much. Oh, right. Okay. I, I think it's thank not. Thank you. Not, you were in it, so it's thank not you. worth it. Yes. It's not worth it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not my finest moment. <laughs> yeah. Well, you probably made some dough on it, though. Uh, made some catnip, yes. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm it's always excited. I would like watch that. any yeah. movie that he's in just because of him. He's one of those actors that to me has that power. Oh, wow. That is like, if he's in, I know that at least it's going to be, it's like a Marilyn's trip, you know? It's like, yeah. it, they're going to bring, he's going to That's me with that like Martin Lawrence. Yeah. Yes, yes. Like in Martin Lawrence, like, you know, I yeah. have, or Mike Epps. Like I have to see those. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. I don't think they're in the same category. Do they have people. black people in Middle Earth? Well, that was the, the long running joke amongst people for a long time. Yeah. That, oh, okay. That the black people were the orcs. Okay. <laughs> well, the, 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 I, I'm hoping that I'm not the only one who's like I, uh, that, that nobody was, has ever heard that before. You've never heard that that theory before. I think this is you're coming up with it. No, no, <laughs> I did not come up with it. And maybe it's the circles I'm running around in. <laughs> well, but, you're around a lot of people, you but know, it's sometimes I'm very well traveled. Exactly. There are some some humans in in the you know like shots. I don't know if it is in this movie or in the second one, where like you know because. Mordor has recruited also men in their different nationalities. Mm. I don't think there are black people in, in, in this middle earth. The, the thing is, it happens the same a little bit with the Star Wars world and all of that. This is pre yeah. a time where like people were more uh, conscious. No Mexicans either. I mean, if, if there there's are, no black people, there's definitely no Mexicans. How do you think the Shire looks so nice? And <laughs> You think that you think white people are running those gardens? <laughs> right. I dare not say so. <laughs> but well, I hope you pay them uh, well, Gandalf. Is it uh, yeah, pay them in fireworks? Did you guys watch the, ho the <laughs> They don't want fireworks. The Hobbit gold afterwards. Well, you probably. I didn't watched. see the Hobbit. Because yeah, the Hobbit. Maybe I, I don't remember because like again it's like the same characters or some of the same characters. They were supposed to be good though. There right? was I remember there's a couple black uh, but kid I, hobbits. They added after the, when things started to become a more like oh we should maybe be a little more conscious uh, of, of how they should our CGI country looks them. like. Like in now, the new Star Wars. Are you proposing CGI blackface? <laughs> that is exactly what I'm proposing. They should uh, go back, like uh, George Lucas adding the aliens and, you know. Right, right. Yes. I, I, no, I, I, I. I I'd don't, be time to change the topic. I don't, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. I don't, I don't think it would look good. But, but I, I do believe that once, you know, as the times change, the movies also change. And even yeah. that world that was. Uh, um, a world that we've seen before. It has happened the same with Star Wars, you know, like yeah, of the, course. the new world had yeah. more diverse cast. But yeah, I I mean, I I hated The Hobbit. It's not as bad as as, it, as I thought it was. Yeah. But if you read the book, The Hobbit is just a tiny book. It's like a ch more like a children's book. <laughs> and from this book, they made as many hours of movie yeah. as from this Bible. And it makes no sense. It That's, feels like a money grab. That was a money grab. I, so it not should good. have absolutely been one film. One it, movie. It, it would have been, if they could truncate the three films I into one film, I think it would have been phenomenal. I feel like oh, that's cool. that yeah. there is a great editor out there that can probably have done it. or Because there is so much time wasted where things are not happening. Like chase scenes that run for like 20 minutes and it's like okay oh, that's crazy enough. fast forward or like singing that goes for like in the for 20 minutes i don't know it like it feels like they made three very long movies about this book was it because of amazon no Did this it? was this was before that's right okay this, okay this is before but but it was because originally so when they finished this movie, it was so successful. New Zealand probably said to Peter Jackson, you know, please keep doing this because mm -hmm. the whole country lives off of Lord of the Rings now. Yeah. And then they he he started working on the, on the script for with the same team for The Hobbit and they hired Guillermo del Toro to direct. Oh, awesome. And he became also a writer. And he moved with his family there and stayed there for three or four years and the movie never happened. So Peter Jackson had to actually become the director for the financing and everything too. Oh, wow. Have. So He moved he, his whole family there for four years. For four years. and, and No he, Mexican he, food. He's like, like, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, but he's he's credited as a writer, I think, and a, and a, and a producer in the movie. Okay. But he didn't do it, which people were excited to see like a new take because his imagination of course. was very interesting. Yeah. Uh, but it felt like, you know, it felt if it lost, to me, lost the magic. Also, it was one of the first movies shot in 48 frames per second and all that. That to okay. me, I, I hate that. Well, 
I heard Peter Jackson was working like 20 hour days because he had to redo everything that Guillermo del Toro was doing because that's his vision, right? Peter Jackson's vision. So I'm going to take this, build the train as it's moving. He's working crazy hours. They had a pause production. It was kind of, it was kind of a mess. Yeah. It was, and and it's the opposite of what this production was. Okay. Because this one was smooth. They showed the Lord of the Rings and like sometimes they do, right? Like because it works so well, the next Two movies were shot as one movie. That's right. They just keep going. That's right. And they just do like it's out. And they got tattoos. I remember Eight months. Yeah. Elijah saying that they all but, got tattooed. I read that like, like in Rolling Stone in 2002. I don't remember that, but oh, it's totally possible. I mean, like, you live there for like. I mean, they become your family. Exactly. You do a shoot like takes over like more than a year. Yeah. I think more smooth. Like more in the indie movies I work on like are like four weeks, six weeks. Yeah. This is like. Eight months, nine months, twelve months. Oh my yeah. gosh! It's a completely different. That's game. wild. Um, yeah. What What is your favorite part of the movie? I mean, your favorite character obviously is Gandalf. Yes, of course. I here. I like Gandalf. Go. Yeah. Uh, I like the little. I mean, I'm all about details. Mm-hmm. Um, I just little things throughout the film, like when a seal door cuts the ring off. Mm. And it changes shape. It's that evil that it will conform to whatever the person is. That's it went from being this <laughs> giant to fit around his finger. The little moments like that. Mm. That's um, cool. I also like um, just some of the battle scenes. How the there's just the light of Gandalf's staff. Mm as they're running through the mines and there are orcs and goblins coming and descending everywhere there are thousands upon thousands <laughs> and then they're just about to strike and then the bow roll you hear in the distance you see the fire and you see the fire yeah. and they are f- afraid and gimli <laughs> is so dumb that he's like yes that's right <laughs> the light of gandalf's staff scared them and and our bravado yeah and then he you, does that smile, and you know exactly what he's thinking. It's like, oh, which as I think the, those moments are so cool. It's filmmaking great. Wise. Yeah, dynamics between the group, and then you just see on on Gandalf's face the Balrog is coming. <laughs> Do you hear it? <laughs> oh, Gandalf must be a little hungry. <laughs> His stomach just chirped a little bit. Yeah. Did what you do you like to eat, Gandalf? Oh, lots of like things. Rabbit uh, and stuff like that. Well, definitely not pussy, according to you. <laughs> <laughs> according to the internet. Uh, I, you know, I like to um, eat off the land, whatever you, you know, whatever's provided. I try not to eat too many creatures that are not uh, needing to be hunted. Oh, I like that. No carbs. You're pretty. Well, you know. I love my carbs. <laughs> oh. You need carbs for energy. You're a thin guy, though, is what I'm saying. I know, but you must. Load on carbs before you go on long journeys with your friends. Yeah, he's like, I know, but yeah. it does seem like, you know, you're like, you really care about your body. Like, you know, when I he's saw you a at Hobbit. That, yeah, like I saw you at that club with your shirt off and you were ripped. Yes, it might have been a spa you saw me at. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I've um, seen you around. <laughs> you have many details about this type of thing, Carlos. Yeah, I've seen Gandalf at bars before. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's always on the dance floor, <laughs> taller than everyone. <laughs> yeah. All right. I can, I can cut a rug as they say. Yes. Yeah. I'm just saying you have a good body. And I and I didn't know you had so many. I've dogs. never heard that before. So the, 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 your favorite part of the movie is the dance scene, you know, in the club. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I like, uh, you know, I just think everything Gandalf is my favorite in the movie. But I do like those small moments, like you were saying, like, I don't know, just like the little intricacies of like Gandalf's face moving and stuff. Like he's just so powerful that yeah. his eyes moving really like tell a story. Just I- going off of like like um, uh, Galadriel when she warns uh, Frodo, you know who I, I'm talking about. Yeah. The soundtrack of when Boromir starts to turn and yeah. then he hits his head and snaps out of it that to me is such a powerful scene so and he good. yells after frodo i'm sorry i'm sorry yeah mm. but it's too late then he sacrifices himself for the other hobbit yes kind of redeeming himself also mm-hmm. an actor that i wasn't that familiar with and then obviously became yeah uh, 
Ned Stark in in, mm-hmm. in Game of Thrones, and that was like also another great. I was so, so gutted when Ned Stark died in that right. episode. <laughs> oh, yes, I thought we were going to fall, as everyone did. You, as we all right. thought that that was who the that series was That was like, was to me, to like out. TV point, they, yeah. they, they, the point on TV would you say like, well, you came from Sopranos and The Wire and things like that were, were very sophisticated, but now it's like, oh, TV it has nothing to envy to film make yeah. in terms of narr- narr- narrative. I want to rewatch Game of Thrones. Oh. Well, I've seen it like it's, three times. I want to watch except it. Except for the ending for me, like it's very, I mean, it's like it should minutes. have ended, in my opinion, one or two episodes earlier as the finale. Yeah, I think they went. They wanted to wrap it up all of it and all of that. And and to me, the changes in characters they happened too quick to to you know at the end and mm-hmm. not as believable like following that whole story. You know. Yeah, I loved so, it. But yeah, but it's uh, it's definitely a great show, and it has a little bit of that Lord of the Rings. Um, oh yeah, I feel after be, Lord of the Rings, the same way that after, not to. after Star Wars, you know, everything space-wise, exactly. I don't think there's anything new. I don't think I have seen maybe something like Gravity that doesn't remind you of, of Star Wars, but it's difficult to do something with space battles. I watched Gravity battles. like two weeks ago. Good movie. Yeah, it's so good. But but with, with epic like this and fantasy, it's very difficult to not see Lord of the Rings, like those shots, those air shots that like turn around and see mm-hmm. the mountains. and So pretty. I love how every movie starts at a point where it's like, it's like TV does this all the time now. Like we're like, okay, we don't follow exactly the moment where we were at, you know? So the second movie starts with that Balrog moment, but what you're seeing it from the outside, right? You're seeing the mountains and like okay. you start hearing and then it, the camera goes into the mountain to go to that moment to see, oh, now what happens to to Gandalf? Okay. Or, and the third movie starts with the Smeagol and going back to the past to that see, moment. See, I don't know those being. things. Haven't Which that, that scene is so dark. And Howard Shore's Howard Shore is such a master at at what he does is that when he when uh, um, Smeagol is strangling, I think is his brother. Yeah, you hear like a boom, 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 like his heartbeat and a whistle of like air, and the air kind of fades and the heartbeat dies. Yeah, in in that in that score, so you're like, oh my god, this is pow- this is dark to yeah. start a movie. Yeah. That darkness is unbelievable what an unbelievable scene to start a movie that way ha, crazy have you heard um uh, i've seen the interviews of how andy circus found the voice for for Gollum. no oh. how so sometimes uh what a lot of voice actors do uh that helps them in uh, and a lot of actors do this as well uh like jim carrey uh his motivation uh for ace ventura was like a bird a bird like like movements, oh, yeah, cool. they sometimes use the, physical, the <coughs> physicality to explore um, how that character lives and breathes. Mm-hmm. So Andy Serkis, what he did was he was trying the different amalgamations of the voice and he realized that what it was that separated Gollum from other characters is he was trying to constantly purge himself like a cat of a hairball. And oh, wow. that's how that moment, yeah. Mm-hmm. But you can see it now that and, you say it. And, and that's where the some of the physicality and the where that wow. comes from yeah. is, is from him seeing his cat and being like, wait a second, I could maybe use this with this character. That's that's great because also wow. when you read the book and you say like, oh, the character is called Gollum because that's the sound that he makes. And it's like, such a Gollum, it's such a difficult thing to me, seeing someone saying Gollum as a, as, as a the sound, yeah. And, and but he does it in a way that is like, oh, I believe it. You know, it's That's like, so okay, cool. he got to that moment and it's like cause, mm-hmm. like I don't wanna, you know, it'll be a difficult thing to try. Yeah. To just say Gollum as like Was he nominated for anything? No, he he wasn't. I think he is fantastic. Also, this yeah. is I mean, in this movie you only see Gollum like in complete darkness. Two or three times. Yeah. Yeah. And and, and yeah. it wasn't as perfected then. You can even see you the, can the see, evolution. It gets much better as the movies mm-hmm. go on. But in the second movie, definitely we were talking yeah. about the second movie, I would say that scene of him talking to himself blew me away in a way that I have never seen. Well, probably nobody has seen a a CGI character oh, now, like with the motion capture yeah. techniques and all that, being so realistic. Frodo you know, Caesar and Planet of the Apes too. Yeah, he did yeah. King Kong with with yeah. with Peter Jackson too. Then Caesar, and then he became the the specialist on being like of a, a mod cop. Mod. When when they're in the mines and and Frodo uh, warns Gandalf, something's something's following us. Yeah, mm-hmm. 
His name is Gollum. I love that part. Following us for three days. (laughs) Yeah. I laughed at that part. uh, I was like, what? (laughs) Like, he's so smart and like he doesn't. Like he, he just lets Gollum follow them. He's, and, and and when Frodo goes, uh, he says something like, uh, "He escaped. How did he escape from them?" He's like, "He was released." released. Mm. Yeah, like so they, good. They don't want they don't want him anywhere. It's like he's going to be your problem now. <laughs> right. But also, he's something interesting, uh, and I think that obviously the movie has a lot of, and uh, the trilogy has a lot of like, un anti you know war uh, mm-hmm. philosophies and also like anti like industrialization you know a little more like respect the environment yeah and there's a moment that also in this movie where he said like i should kill we should kill him and said well actually you don't know what his role in this adventure is gonna be and maybe the pity that your uncle have on him might change the course of oh, everybody's cool. life so yeah. don't go so quickly to expel judgment on others. It's, it's right. a great line. It's right, great right, right. Line. Exactly. I think those It's a good moments, lesson, too. And it's like, yeah, bef- also like, like- You don't know what anyone has gone through. Why why, why are you willy-nilly saying someone should be dead or- Exactly. Killed? Right. Very and, willy-nilly. And, I'm not into willy-nilly. <laughs> yeah. Gandalf's yes, you not are. into willy-nilly. You are willy <laughs> He says some, some people that uh, die deserve life and some people that live deserve death. Who right. Are you? So why you can't be the one to judge that. Right. Which I think is, it sounds it's, religious, like right? Uh, because anti in in a way, the the Tolkien wrote a a, a full Bible again, like in and, and it has a lot of the mythology mix mix myth. He mixes mythology. Gandalf, out mythology. of a lot of the characters, yeah, uh, uh, you know, if you if you're comparing Lord of the Rings to the Bible, which some people, do, <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, um, Gandalf is definitely a prophet like character. Yeah. For sure. Especially as he returns. He returns. He he's dead, but he's he's alive, but he's not exactly the same person. But so it feels a little bit like there has some spirituality yeah. to it. Also, like something like Sneagle kills his brother in a very like Cain, Cain and Abel yes. thing, okay, wow. you know. And actually that dead that he it looks like when you hear him that he only in his whole life, although he's a monster, he had only killed that person and that that kill has like marked his it life, right? It has it ruined, ruined his life. His entire reality. Yeah. Because if the ring could get him to kill someone that he loved, mm-hmm. then he must go all in at this point. Right. The, yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah. That's crazy. My my favorite scene I got a from where we're talking about that scene in the um in the Mines of Moria, Gandalf and Frodo are talking, is when Frodo says, I wish none of this had happened. Mm. And then Gandalf says, so do many people at sea such times, but that's not for us to decide. What it, what is for us to decide is what to do with the time that is given us. Yeah. What a beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, that's so yeah. beautiful. And he has that like kind of like philosophy behind or philosophical perspective, religious. I don't I know. I like if it's it. Really, but it is, it is deep and it's, and it's good in a movie that is packed with action and yeah. sure. So I think that has a lot of those elements. Is it weight? It, like it doesn't like without that it could be a little sillier like it just gives it such weight yeah to have the gandalf character just being like this moral compass yeah that like i watch it like a goofball and i'm like oh i love this guy i like yeah he's teaching me i want to learn from him yeah gimli is great comedic relief yeah and it is yes. he, he, very interesting how it's used and every because there's i mean in the middle of a battle or something too serious like yeah. have that comment here or there that makes it completely like the fact that oh don't toss me nobody tosses uh, nobody tosses a, 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 dwarf. a dwarf and then <laughs> Legolas saves his life by pulling in on his a beard, beard. Mm-hmm. so he doesn't because okay. if you see the shot he's he's not going to make it at all and he, <laughs> and he goes not the bird no, yeah yeah and he has that all oh, that competition to see who kills more people or whatever they 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 are able to keep that fun tone yeah. did you ever play Play the Lord of the Rings Xbox game. I have never. No. no. Oh my Is that great? <laughs> God. You like playing if you're watching, yourself? comment. Please leave a comment and let Gandalf know about this. <laughs> Did you play on PlayStation or Xbox? It was the Two Towers for me. Was the one that was epic, epic battle play at the time when that's when. Yeah, you could play co-op models. at the same time. Yeah, so yeah. you could oh, play as Gimli yeah, yeah, yeah. and Legolas and you could play as Aragorn and you could play That's up to cool. four people and <laughs> you would just have orcs and goblins and Yurikai swarming you. 
and you'd be fighting with swords and axes and bows and the, just so much fun. And then also uh, even the Return of the King game as well. Yeah. Sound off in the yeah. comments. I absolutely <laughs> love those games. Yeah. I, I want to play that now. <laughs> that sounds good. It's so much fun. So much fun. Oh, maybe there's like a yeah. I can get like a PS4 to and play it on PS. Get a modulator, you fool! <laughs> oh, I right. bet you like mods. You I, put like a gay mod on it, perhaps. <laughs> um, Quite possibly. Do you, you put like an adult mod on it? It's like <laughs> things aren't blurred out. <laughs> One of the shots that I think it was in the trailer is one of the shots that stuck with me and it's nothing special and it's a shot that you've seen in, in movies like Vertigo or in, in, in Jaws. The which falling? Is that that uh, the Nats ghoul, these this black riders are coming for the first time and Frodo fills them. Ah! <laughs> so cool. Perfect. Yeah. And he, he looks to the forest and there's this shot, right, that is very ominous where like they're doing like that tracking and zoom mm -hmm. and all that it looks like an accordion kind of like yes. it's getting closer and there's wind with the and i don't know why that shot is stuck in me because they they're only doing it they only did it that one time in the whole movie you know but it's something that moment that is like you know it gets stuck in my head and then seeing the people with no face you know just like get off the road black. <laughs> yeah i don't yeah. mind of game of thrones well i i do feel like a lot of game of thrones uh imagery comes from this. yeah and having seen that uh yeah. i made the mistake uh years ago you keep referring to game of thrones reminds you of game of thrones but obviously game of thrones came after lord of the rings mm -hmm. i made a faux pas years ago i used to work in an alternative rock radio station oh wow and i uh used to do the morning radio with this crew and i one of the ongoing running jokes of the show is how little i actually knew about music for working <laughs> at a radio station <laughs> uh -huh. and i remember them introducing me to run dmc mm. on the radio and i said oh these guys are like the black beastie boys <laughs> right and the Beastie Boys, you know anything about music, took everything from Run DMC. <laughs> right. And, and yeah. A real Elvis Black situation. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a, uh, <laughs> right. History is like that. And that right, is a like, faux pas, Gandalf. It's a little faux pas. Yeah. A little but, 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 <laughs> Lord but of the, it's okay. <laughs> I guess like to, uh, Tolkien and, and, uh, and Martin are similar in the way that they're playing with a lot of religious and mythologies that they are mixing together, right? Yeah. Like, taking from different cultures and put it in a, in a world that is like, oh, somehow it looks medieval, right? Because mm -hmm. they have the castles and the both the show and the movie had those moments, the big epic battles that are very, you know, physical with mm -hmm. the weapons that you use, like in your person is not with airplanes or with bombs or with it, anything of course. like that. And, 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 and then the directors, I think they all saw Lord of the Rings. And when they has a battle in an open field against a castle, mm -hmm. I think it's going to be take time to for someone to come up with something new to a do. A million percent. That is not Lord of the Rings like. Another one of my favorite scenes in the film is when the High Council is meeting and they're deciding whether or not who is going to take the ring, mm -hmm. whether a fellowship is forming or mm -hmm. whatnot. And basically... What is said? I had a little brain fart just then. Oh, it's okay. No, I. I but I've been in these minds. No, but I. I, I <laughs> the love I, of the halfling's I, leaf I, has I, clearly I, slowed your mind. I love. I love that <laughs> moment too because, like, you know, like before this moment, like Gandalf and Elrond are, are talking about who's gonna take the ring. Yes, and Boromir has this moment where he starts to kind of smart off a little bit, mm -hmm. and Legolas jumps in, says. Do you know who you're talking to? Mm -hmm. Right. On behalf of Aragorn. Yeah. This is the true... The true king. The, the true, true king, heir. Yeah. The true heir of Gondor. And uh, it's it's such a great moment because everyone else who's there, it's, it's one of those things I think in life where you... It goes to show you, you should never underestimate someone because of the way that they look or the way they talk or they act necessarily themselves. Or, yes. or the way they present themselves because it can always be somebody that you have no idea who could affect your life in a positive way. Mm -hmm. So you should treat everybody with the Absolutely. same respect. Absolutely. And do you know the power they have? Like, That's like why I said that. 
Joe Rogan was part. talking about, uh, and I think I saw exactly. a clip the other yeah. day about. I said, uh, I said that on purpose. Christian Bale driving a uh, a car that was like not a luxury car, and like oh, yeah. driving just a normal car, and it's like, yeah, and or he dresses normal, so therefore mm -hmm. you know, people might assume that who don't know them that is just a normal guy and not yeah. like someone who's a millionaire or Some whatever. Like, but I, I I do think that that is true, and and Aragorn presents himself uh, even like the way that he's introduced. There's something dark about him. Mm -hmm. He, you know, friend of foe. Exactly. He's, has a, um, he he uses the name Strider. Yeah. He looks like he's a ranger, like an independent being, right? But actually, he's like you know this powerful character who's gonna be the king. I also like how uh, I f I forget his name. Uh, the high elf. Um, Elrond. Elrond. For whatever reason, I always trip up on that because I you, Elrond you, you with Scientology, yeah, yeah, uh, with the, yeah. yeah, or Agent Smith. Also, also, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like, I think like the first time I saw him I was like, how did he escape the Matrix to get here? Because <laughs> yeah. right. he's doing the movies back to back. Yeah. It's like, it's, although he's a secondary character in both movies, Mr. Anderson. Yeah, exactly. You, you. you I think he was casting in Sydney. <laughs> he was like right there. But also, he's. He's very memorable in both movies, mm -hmm. doing a very small part. He gives this, even though they're talking about what could be the end of the world, right. he still has this smile that I love when Merry and Pippin is like, well, he's like, of course, why, why wouldn't you be at the secret council meeting? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like they pop out and he has this smile where it's like, it's, it's cute that his friends are still uh, wanting like, to support yes. him and look out for him. I also, in that moment, I love that. Uh, talking about uh, Ian McKellen's performance, that he knows what needs to be done, mm -hmm. and although he's not saying who should take the ring, he's watching. He's yeah. watching everybody, and the moment that Frodo says, "Okay, I'll do it," he he's not looking at him, but he has a moment to himself where he gives a smile. What you see? I love that. He uh, he acknowledges the the, the situation. Mm -hmm. He feels pity for him. It's like such a smile that it has so much meaning behind. So good, and it's like almost oh. like of course the purest of heart wants to do mm -hmm. the hardest thing, right? Right. Now. right. And he's smiling. I like that he's smiling at that though. Yeah. Like something about a pure heart is like bringing warmth to him, and right. he's like, oh, the story. Like, and he's the first one to say, "I will follow you." Yeah, I love and that. Then, and then that's how the thing gets. And but I like, I like when he goes. You shall be the fellowship of the ring. And then Pippin goes, great. Where are we going? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then it cuts. Yes, he's just on board. Yes, great out for that. It's, it's great. Like also in terms of like a, a theme of the movies, how the smallest people, the most insignificant person kind of still. Can yeah. play the largest role. This do something. Yeah. too, Because at the end of the day, they are all four have a lot to do on on, on how they win this, this war. Even they are the characters that, it's a like Greta, that girl, the the activist. It's like a story like that. Like she's probably inspired. Like I can do anything. Yeah, you yeah. think Greta? Uh, what's Greta, her name? Greta Thunberg. Greta Thunberg, yeah, like Gerwig. so Lord of the Lord of the Rings. Uh, I <laughs> not Greta like... Gerwig, but <laughs> yeah, Greta yeah. Thunberg. Or... Yeah, don't Thunberg. even get us started about the nominations. How the well, females didn't get nominated for Barbie, but I th I think SOS VHS like called the the uh, nominations pretty well. Yeah, I, would I say, think like we did all too. of the all of the movies we talk about uh, yeah. in our list end yeah. up being nominated. Can we even watch that? We can watch the Oscars on the island. Yeah, we, we have we found that <laughs> we have that that, that the, the Palantir uh, yes. from the from you know that. Oh uh, yeah. That's, let us access uh, other worlds. But we, Think, things wash up on shore a lot here. That's how yeah. we got these new beach chairs that that washed up on shore. We should do a special really nice. Oscar viewing with some friends here. Oh, like, yeah. But like, um, yeah, these are nice. Because so. that that's a good conversation to have too, like the nominations. And I mean, I have a lot of opinions too. But oh, uh, yeah. but uh, okay, so but Ryan Gosling was good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Says uh, Legolas. Yeah, he he's. I mean, he's good, but. Yeah, not for could Greta Gerwig not getting nominated? That's crazy. He got, she got a best screenplay, and she probably will win. I think it's enough for that movie. Oh, you're like it's enough. For I mean, I I think it's a great movie. I think it's enough. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here. You heard it here. I think I think he got enough. We got the, the biggest like budget, uh, like box office billion movie dollars, and the somewhere. patriarchy flows strong on the spot. <laughs> right, and and. <laughs> <laughs> the patriarchy about horses is is Lord of the Rings. Uh, you know, that's uh, Ryan Gosling would be happy living here. Uh, Ken, Ken would be Ken. happy. Uh, Ken's going to Middle Earth. <laughs> yeah. Um, because I all 
one of the things that oh, <laughs> can you imagine a, a crossover just a music video for <laughs> what was I made for <laughs> I used <to> <laughs> and I love this song I think it's <laughs> I see you. Was I <laughs> Who shall not? <laughs> oh, but was I can we talk for a second about the, I love the singing, the special effects in this movie that are invisible? <laughs> <laughs> that w- will probably win the Oscar. Uh, and sorry, that's one of my gay play- part things. I like that you. song. Yes, it's not gay to like music. It's just. You know that that, that song. That song. Yeah, okay. that song. It's a little. <laughs> it's even gay for you. It's for me, Gandalf. But this yeah, one, like Gandalf you know, the gay over here. <laughs> Enya, Enya has two big songs in Lord of the Rings, and although they're not the same, it's in the same notes. You know, it's yeah. like a, that. It brings a little bit of the feminine uh, yeah. touch to the. Uh, if someone will oh, recut the song. the, s- the <laughs> scenes between Sam and Frodo with that <laughs> song, <laughs> it will be even. It'll more be great. pretty epic. <laughs> yeah, It'll be pretty epic. But okay, look, can we talk about the special effects in the movie that are invisible? I'm jumping on the you bed. Know? <laughs> <laughs> you guys. <laughs> okay, right, we can I'll talk about special. It's effects. your Sam. <laughs> it's your Sam. <laughs> I'll try a third time asking you the question, but um, because I, I, I get it. <laughs> Sorry, what was the question? To be honest, what that song is, is pretty cool. You look on uh, but <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I have a device. I'm sorry. It's uh, black magic. What is this? What is this? Oh, interesting. Uh, Palantir of yeah. the oh, I have to say, I, I want to, th- then we'll get into your question. I do, before I forget, yeah. I, I want to say, the line of one of my favorite scenes. Okay. When uh, uh, when Bilbo is in his hobbit hole and he thinks that Gandalf might be trying to take the ring from him. Yeah. And you see Gandalf rise. Yeah. His the, voice the echoes voice. like so he good. goes and Do not take me for some conjurer of cheap tricks. I am not trying to rob you. I'm trying to help you. Yes. So good. 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 Just such an epic moment on screen where you're like, oh, this is not just a silly wizard. This yeah. is a very powerful a, wizard. That's such like a grinder late night meetup, though. Like, no. I'm not trying to <laughs> rob you. No. God damn it. Carlos. God damn it. I. <laughs> I'm simply trying to help you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you 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 were able to bring this movie there. I but I like that part a lot, yeah. but it was like it's something you would hear it like in a hotel. Did not, right? It did not cross my mind. I I not cross even mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't put those two dots. If you're together. like on grinder late at night, you're like, meet me at my place. How often are you on grinder? <laughs> late at night. Yeah. Just late at night. Yeah. Just from you know, twelve thirty to three. But <laughs> That's the first moment that Gandalf shows himself as like, oh, some someone other than this, like, kind of like happy this yeah. grandfather, nice, almost magician-like yeah, character. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. What was the question that you? No, the question that uh, one of the things that strikes me the most about this movie is are all these special effects that are invisible, right? Because mm-hmm. you definitely will see something like the the you shall not pass moment or like a big yeah. explosion or a big battle, but the whole movie you have. A fellowship of nine different people that are all different sizes That's in every crazy. single shot, and the, you never question the reality of that. The crane and the sweeping shots are oh. beautiful over the country. That that, yes. that shot with the music when like the first time was they say, "Oh, this is the fellowship of the of the of the ring." Mm-hmm. You have like an air shot of everybody mm-hmm. with the music starting, and then it's a slow motion shot that goes all of them, and the, the camera goes up and down yeah, to cool. capture the, everybody's height. It's, I think it's so beautiful, such a powerful moment. I didn't question it either. It didn't look wrong or anything. Right, like, because my brain like, accepted it. And Gandalf is huge inside this house, and but yeah. Bilbo is, is, for Bilbo, it's a, it's a regular house. I think that is done in a way. <sighs> it's very elegant. Is, yeah. Bilbo, because, the ring's still in your pocket. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Love that. Just that part he, he, he goes to the house. That and freaked me out when it, it was still in his pocket. I was like, "Oh no!" The direction of just the ring 
sliding off his hand. Yes. Like it's trying to stay on its host like a leech, yeah. like an organism. Oh. That it, it's even when it's almost completely <laughs> on its side, it's still yeah. heavy and it's still sticky. So and good. then when it hits, it's this heavy. You have heavy you. It feels like a, a, a ring made There's of some, like uh, you know. It's like I felt bad for him when he walks away. I'm like he must feel so sad and empty right now. Oh, I love how much he's aged in the time. Oh yeah, wow. I love that. It's same. Such a great detail i mean because so it's cool. sad it's sad that oh it, it, it had prolonged his young. life yes. but now you see him it's like his hair is all white he's I completely love different character you know what i noticed this is the 30th time i've watched i've watched it that much i'm a huge nerd but the but the, this time i noticed every time someone let go of the ring they breathe deep oh They're yeah relieved. i did notice that yeah like when when bilbo lets go of it he's relieved when when frodo's at rivendell and places it down he takes a deep breath when uh boromir lets go of the ring and he goes oh i care not and he and he rubs oh, yeah. frodo's hair yeah there's just joy there's just like almost relief when you let go of it they're like oh wow it's gone but 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 tracking in Feels, terms of the filmmaking right they have to have probably different sizes of that ring of course. to get those shots there's a sound that the ring makes you know like a soundtrack sound cool. that it, it has every time i think it's such an impressive <laughs> impressive thing to, to keep track of all those elements but even like well the, then the hobbit does the same thing in, in the movie but i think at warner brothers here they have a forced perspective uh set where like basically mm. if someone sits closer to the camera appears to be bigger uh or oh, and if, cool. if there's someone who's closer to the camera also has a smaller plate or a small mm -hmm. thing he looks bigger the person you know yeah. so things like that that are all like camera tricks that yeah. they're not computer uh i think there's such a cool, so cool cool thing and i i was you know seeing how they made that mm -hmm. feels like oh this is you the think magic, they have that warner the brothers oh huh? They have that at Warner Brothers, they have a or Warner, would it be? I, no, at Warner Brothers, they have a um, just New a, Zealand. I thought, right? This is just kind of like Warner Brothers has now a, um, I guess a touristic uh, tour. Oh, I they see. show you the I see how certain things are made. So it gets That's you a little cool. bit of the movie magic, mm -hmm. and That's the cool. first perspective is just that. And then it has you can go to the friend set too. Huh? And when you're on that tour, do you go to the friend set? Yeah, as well? you go to friend set to okay. to go. To, so a little bit of the highlights of TV. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> TV and, and, and film that are Warner Brothers. But yeah, I I always thought, look, you, you were looking for CGI moments, looking mm -hmm. for big moments where you say, okay, this is a movie. But the basic principle of the film that is like all these people, you never question that that is, oh, I no, love of course. It. Size it's, for the hobbits, there's a size for the dwarf. Right. Size for- For uh, the elves. For the elves. And the, the fact that you have that shot with everybody in a different size, but also Legolas is like walking on the snow, you know, like it's incredible. The, the weight of everybody is different. And I know they use like a lot of doubles, like yeah, yes, little people, oh, where, yeah, of course. you know, and like shots from behind or like people are were too big, but, you know, things yeah. like that. But I mean, it had to be a nightmare to make is what I'm saying. Like uh, every shot, you have to be aware of all those things. Yeah. Oh. A when Aragorn closes Frodo's hand back on the ring. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would have followed you. <laughs> oh. That is such a such a powerful moment where it's like Frodo is so heightened because he's just been accosted by Boromir and yeah. he thinks everyone could be turning on him and to be like and Aragorn even has that moment. He's tempted as well, just like everyone. Everybody's tempted. Mm -hmm. And that's why he's the only one who can do this yeah. mission because and he's... That's set up with uh, Arwen, right? Where he's looking at Isildur, like the same weakness is in my veins. Yes. And Arwen mm -hmm. says, you will face that evil and you will overcome it. Then he's faced it with it, with Frodo and the ring, and he overcomes it. And that's yeah. almost like that gives him the drive, to just more push to continue on with you know, trying to go f save Merry and Pippin and also just like yeah. the journey is like, I did this, if I can do this, then maybe it plants a seed in his head. Maybe I can be the real king of Gondor. Eventually. Right. Mm. I think he, I mean, after Ian McKellen, I think he has the second biggest performance in the movie mm -hmm. because he has to, he's a man in the movie and men are the kind of, the only race that is the most corrupted, the less, you know, there's mm -hmm. no hope for men. So he is one of those, but he also has this nobility to him and his yeah. principle and his, and he has to balance like being a warrior and like even the way that he interacts with the two women that he loves in a mm -hmm. way, you know, and all that. I think he, there is a lot of subtlety in his performance that you yeah. always say like, okay, he's tempted, but he's noble. He's not going to be corrupted. Mm -hmm. He can be this king that, that he you know that everybody wants 
to 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 have uh because everybody else like in the world man. of men could be corrupted yeah. right the kings and the and of the uh, stewards of gondor or roham all of like those bernie that. sanders or something <laughs> I, i could do it you know <laughs> you, your your mind works in fantastic ways carlos uh oh, thank you <laughs> <laughs> legolas i mean <laughs> okay let's uh okay why if anyone hasn't seen this movie why why would they uh why they should watch lord of the rings i think you should watch it um for the story for the filmmaking for the character development for the soundtrack there's literally i i could not say good enough things about the lord of the rings trilogy uh i think um it's worth the investment of your time of the three hours there's a lot of things these days that i actually don't think deserve that amount of time on screen i would say most of things <laughs> yeah. don't deserve it with lord of the rings they milk every moment where mm -hmm. each of those minutes and those seconds of those three hours of each of those movies are earned and they should be watched and and yeah and that's why although i as a little nerd fan i did enjoy the stand, standard versions but i do think the original versions are tighter like mm -hmm. literally like they're they're short, oh, I but, noticed but they're, that. they're, yeah. they're they did at such a good I think job I think you watch movie. the extended version after you appreciate the first version. Right. Mm. I would not start with the extended no, version. No, no. And, There's and a reason why that it, was the theatrical reason, cut. And it's not just like the fact that it is it will be too long. It is like, you know, sometimes films need a you don't need every bit oh, of no. everything to understand the story. I think right. they did such a, I, I I do think these movies are kind of magical. They capture a time also in mm. you know, as the early 2000s. Yeah. And yeah. I, I I definitely would recommend watching Lord of the Rings Me trilogy. Too. I, I, I even if you if you're not big on fantasy, like Andrew would say, you know, I don't like fantasy movies. I'm not big on it either. This and then I watch this. It's like, beyond shit. beyond that, right? Because yeah. the themes are are transcendent. Uh, they're yeah. like you know they go beyond this for sure. And percent. the filmmaking is like I think Peter Jackson was born for this. Mm. He I think he picked here. I don't think is it's not that he's not good and he's gonna do all the things, but he'll never reach this. This is like his yeah, of course. his masterpiece and I think it's worth watching. Yeah, and Carlos is more of a new watcher. What did you feel? Yeah. I you what did I feel? Yeah, when you watched it. I felt like warm inside. Like I like the lessons that are taught. I like those moments of like nobility and like being, I don't know, like an honorable person. I think those kinds of stories are really amazing. And they like, I think it's Lord of the Rings reminds me of like why you watch movies. Like you watch movies to learn lessons. Like you don't watch good fellas to like want to be a gangster. You watch it. So you see what happens when you are one. Like yeah. Lord of the Rings just reminded me of like, yeah, it's just a, I, I can't believe I But also the all factor so of like, you know, it's like you are in a different world that I love is so it. interesting. But it also world. like it's like you said, it transcends it. And yeah. I think yeah, it's why movies are made is this movie. I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree. Okay. Yeah. Best the best that Hollywood has to offer is this type of movie. A, a million percent. All right. Well, thank you, Gandalf, for joining us today. Uh, oh, yeah, Gandalf. Thank, thank you, you so much, much for That's having me. A treat having you. And my distinct honor to be here. <laughs> Do you like care quick. if I plug a couple things? Oh, absolutely. Now, uh, as Gandalf or Besides Jeremiah? I have a very good friend named Jeremiah Watkins. <laughs> yes. Oh. Very hardworking comedian <laughs> making the rounds, as they say. Yes. Uh, watch Stand Up on the Spot, youtube.com slash at standupots every other Monday. And watch a new podcast of his called Trailer Tales. That's every Friday. YouTube.com slash Trailer Tales Pod. That's with Trailer Trash Tammy and Crystal and Dave Gunther. Lots of exciting things going on. And at Jeremiah Stand Up on social media and JeremiahWatkins.com for tour dates. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart for having me on the show today. Awesome. <laughs> that, Gandalf, that was incredible. That's insane. I can hear you talk like that. I think you should just be Gandalf. This uh, is the Gandalf new Gandalf on the spot. Like Austin Butler yeah, yeah, yeah. and Elvis. You just I never think your next stand up on the spot, I, I dare you to go like that and do it like this. And come see me as Gandalf <laughs> doing stand up on the spot. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> can I get a suggestion, you fools? <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. This is so much fun. Thank you for coming. <laughs>